All right, movie lovers, once again, another episode of Contenders with the number one film critic in the nation, Mr. Sean Edwards. And we're right here on the floor of the Critics' Choice Awards, where it's going down tonight. But today we want to talk to you about the Oscar nominations. Because the last episode, we predicted who would be the nominees. And we now tried. that we, we tried, <laughs> and now that we got the official list, we want to talk to you about Man. who's going to win and who should have been in. So. Just like last time, we're going to start with Best Picture. And ironically, we're sitting right here straight out of Compton table uh, for Critics' Choice Awards. And there probably won't be a table for the Oscars because they only they have a... <laughs> and finally, we are pleased to announce the film selected as the Best Picture nominees. They are The Big Short, Brad Pitt, Dee Dee Gardner, and Jeremy Kleiner, producers. Bridge of Spies, Steven Spielberg, Mark Platt, and Christy McCoskow Krieger, producers. Brooklyn, Fanola Dwyer and Amanda Posey, producers. Mad Max Fury Road, Doug Mitchell and George Miller, producers. The Martian, Simon Kinberg, Ridley Scott, Michael Schaefer, and Mark Huffam, producers. The Revenant, Arnon Milshon, Steve Golan, Alejandro G. Ayotitu, Mary Parent, and Keith Redman, producers. Room, Ed Guiney, producer. And Spotlight, Michael Sugar, Steve Golan, Nicole Rocklin, and Bly Pagan Faust, producers. For the complete list of all the nominations, please visit Oscar.com. <laughs> well, well, here, well, here's the deal. I mean, you, you got eight movies that got selected for Best Picture, but the movies that everyone's talking about are the ones that didn't get in. I mean, most noticeably was Straight Outta Compton, because here's the deal. It got a Screen Actors Ensemble nomination, it got a Writers Guild nomination, and it got a Producers Guild nomination. Now, that's three out of the four major guilds. Generally, when a movie gets that many Guild nominations, it's a shoe-in. It's a lot for a Best Picture nomination. So if a movie like Straight Outta Compton gets three out of four of the major Guild nominations and still doesn't get the Best Picture nomination, what is it going to take to get a movie about the black experience to get a Best Picture nomination? Because you've got to figure, you know, they always say, well, it, it's not based on a quota system. It's not based, you know, of lack of merit. But then again, it, it, it doesn't get in. So you've got to figure that, you know, there's some other factors at play here because the movie didn't get nominated for Best Picture because it was a quality movie. Because you validated it. You said it was well written. Yeah. You said it was well acted, and you said it was well produced, and in my opinion, it also deserved a Director's Guild nomination for F. Gary Gray. So when you have a movie that has that sort of criteria and succeeds at the level that the movie succeeded, because it also was a box office hit, then you got to wonder, I mean, what's the deal? Now, I was not surprised by any of the nominations, but I was very, very disappointed. But I just I just wasn't surprised. But you know, Strata Compton was a movie that a lot of people are talking about, which got snubbed. And of course the big one, the movie that's like too big to fail or too big to ignore was Star Wars The Force Awakens. I, I was I just knew they were gonna just like put it in because you have to put it in. I mean, it's a it's it's a well made movie. It's a big movie and it broke box office records and you know JJ Abrams did his thing. So I was I was a little I was I was I was a little surprised by Star Wars. I was a lot of surprised by Straight Outta Compton. Well, let let me ask because last year they had ten nominees, and not that I fit, not that I think that Straight Outta Compton would have been number nine. That should have been number nine out of right, out of right, ten, right. or Star Wars should have been number Star Wars maybe should have been number nine or ten out of ten. But why was it only eight nominees this year and uh, in that category? Well, see, here's the thing. I, I think they should do the Best Picture nominations the way they do at the Critics' Choice Awards, where you say, like, there's 10 nominees, you nominate 10 movies. But what the Academy Award does, they use this thing called a preferential ballot, which means that the people who vote for the Academy Awards get to choose five movies on a weighted scale. So if not enough vote, if a, if a movie doesn't get enough votes, then it's not, it's not slotted in. I just think they should take the 10 movies to get the most votes. And so then when you say you have 10 slots, you have 10 movies to fill those slots. I mean, and that, that's why I like the Critics' Choice because it's like, okay, we tell you up front, we have 10 slots, so there's 10 movies to get nominated for Best Picture. And I think that's the, that's the best way to do it because when you start having to figure out algorithms and new math to figure out which movies get in, then you have things happen, which happened this past Thursday, which you only get eight out of the 10 slots filled with movies because 
by right, I mean, and I don't know how you weighed it, but it would have been nice to see two other movies get in because a lot of people thought that, you know, Sicario should have got a nomination or Ex Machina should have got a nomination. I mean, there were some solid movies that got left out. I mean, Caro got left out, which blew me away. I mean, so so you got, you know, a lot of movies got left outside the party, like Caro, Ex Machina, uh, Star Wars, Straight Outta Compton, Creed, Beast of No Nations, Concussion. Yeah, <laughs> so you, yeah. you, left, you left a lot of movies so, you know, on the cutting room floor. Wow. So when, when you look at it and you look at who's hosting this year's Oscars and uh, do you do you think that that's going to be a point of, uh, do you think that's going to come up on stage with, with, with? Well, see, here's the thing. I, I mean, I don't, it, sh it shouldn't be like that because the thing about it is we all like movies because we love them. You know, you want it to be, it should always be like, um, a celebration of excellence. I mean, that's, that's what it's supposed to be about. When, you know, when you have the Golden Globes, when you have the Critics' Choice Awards, when you have the Academy Awards, it's supposed to be a celebration of excellence of the movies that were released for a particular year. And I think that should always that should always be the focus because, in my opinion, it diminishes what the the filmmakers. You know, it, it's hard to make a movie. You know, not everyone yeah. can make a movie. So when you put in the time and you put in the effort and you know and, and you create something that you know people watch and enjoy. You much rather have them talk about and celebrate that artistic achievement, and not other forces to kind of diminish what all these hardworking people went through to make these things happen. Because yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's sad. Because number one, I think it's it's hard when you like have movies compete against one another. Because I mean, there's different genres, different types of movies. People have different tastes. But it, it should always be about celebrating the excellence of cinema and just you know kind of do away with the the other issues that tend to pop up because. That's not why people make movies, and that's not why people love movies. One thing that I keep seeing come up in the Twitter blog and everything else is that, well, the, the, the voters didn't even watch it. And I know when it gets to nominations and nominees, the, the, votes have, the voter the guild has to, the members have to sign off on, we watched all these movies. Right. Is, is the possibility that some of these movies... I know Star Wars wasn't, you know, released early to, to, to critics and voters and wasn't screeners and didn't go out and straight out of Compton may have not been seen by some members. Do you think that might have been played into? Uh, I hope, I mean, you know, here's the deal. I, I, I hope not. I mean, and, and that's the thing because, I mean, you, number one, you know, if you know that you're going to, like, vote at the end of the year, you would hope that people are watching movies all year round. Like, Aren't they watching movies in January and February and March and April and May? Yeah. So you really shouldn't have to rely on screeners at the end of the year. I know, like, I'm a member of the Broadcast Film Critics Association. So, you know, the only way we get membership is because we review movies on a regular basis, which means by the end of the year, you shouldn't be that far behind. Yeah. You may only have to need to watch one or two movies to, to be caught up. So I don't know. I, I would hope that people, because I like watching movies. Yeah. So I would hope that the people that vote for something <laughs> as big as the Academy Awards or the Golden Globes or the Critics' Choice Awards are actually watching the movies. I don't understand why they wouldn't be watching movies, because I would watch movies for fun anyway. So why aren't they watching the movies? That's what people do. People go to the movies. <laughs> like, it's Friday. <laughs> I'm going to go to the show. <laughs> so I, I don't know. That's kind of weird if they're not watching the movies, because who doesn't watch movies? Every, like, everyone watches movies. So when you know that you have to vote, I mean, which is like a part of your you know, criteria to be a member of an organization. Why wouldn't you do that? I mean, that's, a, that's the thing that baffles me because people watch movies for fun. <laughs> that's what that's what we do <laughs> as humans. We we want to be entertained. So I don't understand how they are not watching the movies.